streaming. All right, and then I will hit the Facebook Live button. And this just takes one second, and then we will get going. This meeting is being broadcast on Facebook Live. Open hours. Technically, it's not really broadcasting until I hit this one more button. Uh, okay. And so now we should be live on Facebook. Yes. And the last button I hit is a recording button on Blue Jeans. So here we go. Recording has started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to 96 Boards Open Hours. That is the 89th time I've said that because this is episode 89. Today is February 1st, and I have a very exciting episode planned for you all. So first off, let me kind of give you the breakdown of how we're going to go about things today. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are joining us from Coursera. Some of you are from Qualcomm. Some of you are from UCSD. Today, we have three special things that I'm going to go over. One is we're joined for a special segment that will continue for the next 10 weeks or so, uh, or I should say maybe six or seven weeks, uh, around a very cool course that has been launched at a university level at University of California, San Diego. Uh, we will be joined by one of the students of this course who will be talking about a project that they're developing on the Dragon Board 410C. So uh, we hope to be joined by him. I'm not sure if he's in the call. I'm gonna check in just a second. Uh, he'll give us a little 30 second to two minute elevator pitch of what they've been up to. And then we'll break right into the main segment, the main course, which is talking about the official launch of the renovation or the revamp of Coursera. And then after that, of course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some questions, we'll have some fun, I'll sip on my coffee, and uh, some people on the call might wanna uh, talk about some of the things that they're working on. So uh, a lot of fun planned for you, and we look forward to taking anyone's questions. I wanna remind anyone on the call, you know, I talk a lot, uh, uh, you know, we are going to be talking with people who are going to be demoing or talking about things. We're going to do screencasts, but this is a very informal call. Okay, like we're here to have fun. We're here to hang out. You know, I hope you brought your coffee. So, you know, interrupt me. Uh, any of the guests that we have on the call, they've all agreed. It's fine if you interrupt them. We want to take your questions. And if you don't feel like interrupting us, post it in the chat. We'll get to it right away. Sahaj is monitoring YouTube and IRC. I'm monitoring the Blue Jeans chat. We'll get those questions answered right away. So with that being said, uh, first things first, is Jung on the call? Maybe? Because if he's not, we're going to, yeah, I see him. Jung, what's up? You're on mute, so you're going to have to unmute. See you unmuted. Can't hear him. So maybe why he troubleshoots that. Jung is a student from University of California, San Diego, participating in a course called ECE 191. This uh, stands for Electrical Computer Engineering. Uh, uh, 191 is somewhat of a projects class. So it's like a senior design project class. And for this project, they're, they're building a smart portal between a user node and a home node. Uh, let's try pinging him one more time. Jung, are you around? Because we can't hear you. It was working yesterday. No? All right. We're going to have to move on. Okay. Moving on. Simon, Rajan, Christine, call, call in on all you. How are you doing today? Good. Hello. Good. Good to hear. Yeah. So, um, Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Coursera launch. Now, very, very first of all, I wanna say, back in 2015, a little bit of a, of a history here, uh, 2015, we launched the first course. Now, for those of you who are unaware of what this was, right? Big deal, because uh, this was right around the time when the first Dragon Board was released. 
I have one on the wall here. These were these cool looking red boards. No one really knew much about them. Uh, they were being compared to other single board computers, uh, Raspberry Pis, Beagle Bones. Why do I care about Dragon Board? Why do I care about 96 boards? Well, it turns out that there are a lot of reasons to care about these boards, right? Now, the problem is, is that when we were trying to figure out these reasons back in 2015, we knew the reasons, but there weren't as many tools as we wish we had to demonstrate these reasons, to show people what the boards were actually fully capable of. So in 2015, we took these little red boards, these dragon boards, and we started just hacking away. Uh, several months later, we push out a fantastic course, in my opinion, and uh, you know, we saw 30,000 plus students join us. There were, uh, you know, a lot of, there was a lot of movement around this because it was one of the first hands-on lab-based courses at UC, uh, at, uh, from UCSD, but on Coursera. So uh, there was a lot of movement. Now, two years later, two and a half years later, we're sitting here and we're wondering, you know, why can't we start bringing in all of these new tools that people should be able to use uh, with their Dragon Board 410C. And, you know, taking into account that the 96 boards ecosystem, as you can see, my wall right here, has grown substantially. Dragon Board was, I, I think, the, the second board that 96 boards ever pushed out. And so now you're looking at, you know, 10 plus boards uh, up here uh, with all sorts of different capabilities. Um, the ecosystem has grown. And so this is what happened. We said, let's redo the course. Qualcomm came in. UCSD uh, decided to take on the, the task. And then uh, me being one of the, the people who worked on the original course, I thought it would be fun to, um, to continue this effort. Uh, so I joined in and I, I decided to help out. Now, um, I want to, that was my brief history. So I, I just want to give an opportunity real quick for Rajan and Christine to introduce themselves uh, because you're going to see Rajan in the in, in the course when you take it, if you take it. Uh, but Christine was one of the big leaders in pushing this forward. So um, if you guys want to take a second. Hi, it's Christine. So, yeah, we were really glad to be able to partner up with UC San Diego and with you, Robert and Lenaro, to um, have the course get updated. Um, it was great to see the extensions and a lot of brainstorming and debate about what it should cover and what it shouldn't cover. So it's uh, really great day to see all the updates go live so thank you to you robert especially for your hard work and all of this as well yeah we're, we're uh, i mean i was very excited so most of this work that 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 you know i did was kind of pro bono christine rajan you guys were huge helps in pushing this forward i mean couldn't have done it without you either uh so rajan please you're up yeah thanks thanks robert uh, you can hear me right yes yeah, it's been a long time since I joined Open Hours again. So, uh, yeah, th thanks so much. It was it was a wonderful experience. Actually, I want to give a shout out to the UCSC professors as well. They working with them, working with the students, working with you, Robert. As you said, you were one of the first uh, uh, team members who put the course together. Was a, a really good experience. I think uh, everybody who takes the course uh, will notice. Uh, the updates and and the approach that we took while we updated the course uh, it's more geared towards uh, towards current iot uh, trends I, I i would say so it's it's been a really great experience for me personally working with the professors and the student team i don't know it's it's something about going back to the university campus makes you want to go back to school the the <laughs> entire <laughs> atmosphere is different so it's it's been it's been awesome. Thanks, thanks, Robert. No, yeah, thank you. And so it looks like I, I see Simon on the call. I think you know he deserves an introduction and a and a slight applause. Uh, are you there, Simon? Are we going to get a video feed from you? Are we having more technical difficulties? Uh oh. See, like, no, we can't hear you, Simon. See, like, I, I want to, I want to, like, vet everyone's connection and vet everyone's speakers and, and microphones before each show, but it's just so hard, you know? Uh, so, Simon, you want to try one more time? All right. 
I think you have to maybe just switch your microphone or unplug your headset. Last time we talked, your headset wasn't working. Either way, uh, maybe you can just interrupt me when you're done here. But again, I want to remind everyone, please feel free to ask questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screen share and we are going to dive right into the new material. OK, so I want to remind everyone the original Simon. No, the original six courses consisted of first. The history of the Internet of Things. How did we get here? That was taught by Harnath Karudadri, one of the esteemed professors from UCSD, and also teamed up with Gans Chikalingan. So they both taught this course together. It was a great course, Introduction to IoT, gave you a nice history lesson. Uh, a lot of people really liked this one. The next one was setting up your development environment. So we set up the development environment uh, on the Dragon Board 410C. On the third one, we started working with sensors, actuators, started programming the Dragon Board a little bit more in depth, creating applications and pushing out some fun stuff. Fourth course was voice over internet protocol or communications. And we built our own little VoIP application and communicated between two Dragon Boards or a Dragon Board and a phone, et cetera, et cetera. Fifth one was multimedia, uh, where we did some multimedia work. I believe we made our own little kind of video player and uh, did some video playback, et cetera, et cetera. And then the sixth one was a capstone where we built a self-sustainable mobile surveillance system, right? Using the Dragon Board 410C. Now, what changes have we made to this course since then? We completely ripped apart courses two and three. So courses two and three, you'll see they are complete branches off of your original course. Now, from my understanding, the way Coursera does things is that you subscribe for a monetary monthly payment and you can take whatever courses you want under Coursera's umbrella, right? So now if you are currently on, on the uh, Coursera course that we're talking about, when you reach course two or course three, you can branch off and you can choose to take one of the two branches. So the new branch for course two we took course three, the previous course three and course two, and we just kind of smacked them together and made a uh, really fun, more immersive, more easy to access uh, and kind of more easy to implement um, uh, projects based course. So you learn about the Dragon Board, you learn about all the resources, you get a bunch of homework, a bunch of quizzes. So good luck. And then you and then you end up pushing a bunch of projects onto your Dragon Board. So we have a bunch of pre built canned exercises that you can clone and then push onto your dragon board and they should seamlessly work right possibly with some uh some slight code modifications and then of course you're going to be tested on the implementation and possible changes that you might be asked to make to this code course three is a brand new course because we took course three and merged it into course two course three was gone so we completely rewrote it we made it a cloud-based course so now you get to use the Dragon Board 410C for cloud, uh, all sorts of cloud applications. Uh, now, while the beginning of the course focuses on teaching people about kind of the different cloud services that are out there, we eventually choose Amazon Web Services as our main, uh, our main kind of develop or our main environment to work with. So we focus on several, uh, d several uh, Amazon Web Services services. And we show you how to use those, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So I, I'm going to give one more chance for Simon to speak up. No? Hear me now? Hey, hello. there he is, Simon. Yeah, hello, everyone. Hey, welcome. Hello, world. So <laughs> so, so you, no video feed for you today? Uh, Not today, <laughs> sorry. That's all right. That's all right. So, um, yeah, please give us your introductions. Uh, Simon was the lead for this project, by the way. Uh, I'm Simon. I'm a third year electrical engineering student at UCSD, and I was working with Robert and a bunch of other students and under uh, Hari and Gon uh, to make this project, make the project possible. Uh, excited to deliver it. <laughs> awesome. Yes. And so I, I did mean to say earlier, uh, Simon has a strong plan in place for the support of this course. So we were fortunate enough, uh, you know, thanks to Qualcomm, thanks to UCSD, to be able to retain 
uh, uh, a handful of students to support this course. And this is huge because compared to the first time we launched this course, unfortunately, we just didn't have what it take what it took to make sure that everyone got the attention they needed throughout their their uh, their kind of experience. So this time around, uh, we could you can expect a a very vibrant ecosystem or environment on the forums. You can expect more initiatives, uh, changes to the course, a very dynamic feeling to the content. Uh, there will be um, there will be a lot of uh, uh, kind of tangible. Uh, uh, what is it? You know what? I don't even want to go with that word anymore. There will be a lot of a lot of fun aspects that you'll get to you'll get to kind of uh, <laughs> enjoy, right? Yeah. There you go. Whatever. Um, anyways, so let's move on to let's move on to the um, onto the showcase, right? So I'm going to share my screen now. I'm going to talk about half of course two, and then Simon's going to talk about pretty much the rest, uh, course the rest of course two and course three. Is that okay with you, Simon? Yeah. I do. All right, cool. So I'm going to share my screen here. And please, again, if anyone has any questions, interrupt me at any time. Uh, that's the whole point of this. So what you're looking at here is actually the admin uh, screen. So this is this is what it looks like for us admins on this side. And it takes a lot of work to get all this stuff set up, believe it or not. This is course two. And what we've called it is Dragon Board Bring Up and Community Ecosystem. Now, community ecosystem, uh, you know, as as a representative of Lenaro and 96 boards, what that really means is 96 boards ecosystem, right? That's that's mostly what it is. Uh, and so when you uh, are taking this course and if you have any questions, if you have any sort of uh, doubts or you feel that uh, your questions might better serve the greater ecosystem outside of Coursera, come talk to me. We'll be here on open hours. We're here every Thursday. Come talk to me. Join the 96 boards forums. In fact, in the course, you'll find out that we do share all of this stuff with you. So if we look down this list, you'll see that, uh, do I need to make it bigger maybe? Let me see. You'll see that we kept some segments from the previous course. However, we did change them to be optional. So if you look down here, you'll see that we still kept various pieces here, like uh, you know terminology, getting used to the different words that we might use throughout the course. These were taught by students in the original iteration. And so uh, you're not really required to watch these, but we do give you the option to experience what, almost like time walking, if anyone has play, ever played World of Warcraft, right? So like you go into the time walking dungeons and anyways, so, so it, this this is kind of like getting a little experience, a little taste of what happened in the last in the last iteration. So we didn't want to get rid of everything because it's still enjoyable. It's still, you know, solid information. So you can get to know some of the terminology that we use as the speakers, the concepts, beginner level uh, uh, background on the concepts, uh, more supplemental materials, just basically us providing you with some of the readings that we found on Unix, MS-DOS, you can see here a little cheat sheet with more commands when you're working on MS-DOS or when you're working in the Linux terminal, stuff like that. And then we do like some little Git exercises. Um, now, while the course, one of the big things uh, that has also changed here is that it's no longer really focused on Android and Linux, okay? So unfortunately, we found it much easier uh, and much Bent more beneficial for the student to focus on a single operating system. We chose Linux, okay? But for anyone who is still interested in working on Android, we did leave some of these optional uh, pieces here. So Fastboot, Android Debug Bridge, and then of course there are some optional quiz assessments if you'd like to take. Now this is where things get more interesting and this is where you're going to find the new content after you've gotten through the supplemental stuff we give you kind of a week to get caught up and then you join into this new set of lectures uh myself and rajan we got to do an entire module so i mean if you go like to this lecture right here you'll see this is really fun uh the av team compared to last time we did this they kind of pulled out all the stops they let us do picture in picture they let us do a whole bunch of cool stuff. I don't know why this isn't loading. Maybe I am just uh, overloading my 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 Wi-Fi right now. 
I mean, my bandwidth is, is messed up. Either way, um, I'll try to show you a video in a minute and get a sneak peek. Um, but yeah, so you get this whole out of the box experience, a walkthrough. We show you all the resources, uh, getting you more familiar with uh, Linux. And then, and then of course we assign homework. And one of the homework assignments is to join us here on open hours. So I'm gonna be, you know, hopefully giving out some special codes to people to report their attendance on open hours. Just hang out with us, right? This one was an amazing experience, okay? So this course, this lesson right here, you get one, oops, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight videos, eight, eight videos. But these videos, are done by Lawrence King himself, right? So we uh, were lucky enough that Lawrence flew all the way from Canada down to San Diego, like about a five hour, six hour flight to stay for us with, stay with us for one day to record these videos. And he is, for those of you who aren't familiar with Lawrence King, the inventor, the creator, uh, the lead of the team who originally made the Dragon Board happen. OK, so he's going to break down the 96 board specification, why Dragon Board was designed around the 96 board specification, the history of the Dragon Board. Believe it or not here, the Dragon Board, this one that you're looking at, and the one that you have on your desks, I hope, uh, is actually not the first Dragon Board. OK, Dragon Board actually made its way up from like six iterations and then finally nailed it on the 96 board spec. So he talks about the history of that, goes deeper, dives deeper into the uh, Snapdragon 410e chipset, and then talks about why they chose their onboard storage, the EMMC versus UFS versus uh, other solid state versus, uh, you know, magnetic uh, hard drives and, you know, why they chose this and the RAM, all this kind of stuff. So he goes into deep dives into all the different aspects of the Dragon Board. Very interesting. And then I'm going to kind of, uh, I'm going to kind of skim by this one, but essentially you get a very deep look at the 96 boards ecosystem and the mezzanine community. This is very important because, because we noticed in the last iterations, we listened in the last iterations, a lot of people kind of felt that they weren't being heard or that they didn't have the means to be heard. Okay. Now, what we did here is we gave you all of the information that you need to basically get out of Coursera. I'm not saying get out of Coursera in the sense that like, you know, leave Coursera, continue doing your Coursera work, but how you can access more resources and more things that you need in the ecosystem itself to answer the questions in Coursera, to complement and to supplement your experience in Coursera. And so this is kind of, why we added that in there. And then we have more time walking videos. So here's another look back at, at some of the videos that we felt were the most interesting or things that people might wanna still view uh, from the previous iteration. So we kept those in here. You can compare uh, this important board components uh, that was done by, I believe myself and Eric Bureau, uh, an old uh, friend and call, he is a friend of mine still, colleague, just co-student of mine. Um, uh, and then you can compare that with the, you know, board layout and features that Rajan and me did, right? So uh, there's a, there's definitely a lot of things, and this is just the first module, all right? So I'm going to hand it over to Simon now to kind of break this down. Simon, you know, go take take your time or go as fast as you like. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the next uh, module after that, I think, is the sens mezzanines and sensors. So we go. The first thing we do is just for anybody that hasn't like used Linux before, we just go into the Linux file system and commands and just how to use it. Uh, and then some dependencies that you might need uh, over over the course. Uh, and after that, we just show you the mezzanine that we've chosen to use, which is the Seed Sensors Mezzanine Kit. Uh, it has a bunch of good sensors in it that we like to use for the <coughs> Coursera. And we just gonna I'm gonna go show, I'm gonna show it real quick. Yep. I'm gonna show the seed sensor mezzanine kit. So this is the seed sensor mezzanine kit. And uh, real quick, Simon, I just wanna to touch on something. Yeah. Back when, back when we launched the first course in 2015, this didn't exist. The, the idea of a mezzanine existed, but no mezzanines existed yet. 
No, no consumer mezzanines, I should say. So now in 2015, we had you build uh, virtual grounds and use amplifiers and do all this crazy stuff to bring up your voltage, uh, voltage dividers. And, you know, we, we were just doing all sorts of crazy things. Okay. Now it was fun. Hopefully the people who took the course learned a lot of things, but in essence, unnecessary in when you're working with this kind of stuff. So now you, now you can, you know, get a mezzanine like this for 20 bucks, uh, pop it on top of your dragon board right through the low speed header. And then you have access to all of the things that, you know, we spent hours and hours and hours trying to teach you how to build. It's all on a single board. Now there's plugs right on top. And this kit, we wanted to build a kit for all of that big old bill of materials that we provided you. We said, here's, here's this big old bill of materials. We don't care where you are in the world. Unfortunately, we can't build one for every region. Uh, good luck. Well, now this is almost available globally. You can buy the kit, buy the dragon board. You're set. You can take the entire course. So we've hopefully made it a lot easier narrowing it down from like, I think like 50 different purchases to just two purchases. Yeah. Okay. There you go, Simon. Sorry. I just wanted to kind of give a back backdrop on that. Oh yeah. Uh, well, uh, so I think after the mezzanine, uh, oh, Oh, should, oh, sorry. Should I keep scrolling down? My bad. Yeah. Here you go. Uh, yeah. After the mezzanine, we just kind of go through some more like programming and Linux kind of things and just show you how to just make a small program. Uh, this would probably like review for a lot of people that have used it before or that like have any programming experience. And then after that, we go into some of the more hands on projects, uh, such, as an, such as an alarm clock and the most code encoder. And we just kind of show you how to demo them. And then we want you to go through and build them yourselves. Uh, and then yeah, so there's <clears throat> there's a bunch. There's one, two, three, four, five, five projects, and these are pretty canned, yeah. right? I mean, essentially, you've built everything for them. They just clone it, build it, and run it. Yeah, yeah. As long as they follow the instructions and they set it up, it should be good. There you go. That's pretty cool. Awesome. So then we go into the next one. Yep. So the next one is more advanced projects. So the last ones are uh, slightly easier to set up and just like introduce you to different uh, sensors or different aspects of a board. And the next one kind of takes more of those aspects and combines them together. Uh, we have two major projects in this one. And then the first uh, lesson actually is building from scratch, uh, like building open embedded Debian and Android from scratch and just giving an overview of how to do it and <clears throat> giving you resources to go if you want to try it yourself go for it and then the, after that is the advanced projects we have a uh, google assistant and home surveillance uh so google assistant's like getting the google assistant on your phone all set up on your dragon board so almost having like your own google home uh and then home surveillance is <clears throat> one of the projects on the dragon board the 96 board the repo and it's uh essentially a camera it tracks you and then it interacts. It has a small interaction with a AWS and it sends you a message if uh, it sees someone and it sends you a link to so that you can see who it is in your home. Awesome. Yeah. So um, and then what we did keep on here at the end. Right. So like those are those are some of the advanced uh, exercises. And, th and this is the this is the beautiful thing here, everyone. What, what I want to really touch on is that Simon, Simon has signed his life away on this project, right? So he basically is there for anyone who has ideas um, and would like, and I'm, I'm, I'm signing him up for this right now. But if you have an idea for any other cool projects that should be featured on the course or something that you feel you would like to learn, you know, go to the Coursera forums, post it in the Coursera forums, tell us. And, you know, we will listen. We have Simon, some other students that will be involved, myself. Uh, there will also be, uh, you know, some other people from 96 boards who would be greatly interested in knowing what you are interested in learning. And, you know, we'll do our best to develop it for you. We'll do our best to. I'm oh, sorry. It's Christine. Yeah, please. Again. yeah, yeah I just ahead. want to add to what you're saying is that when we were looking at redoing courses two and three, 
you actually spent a considerable amount of time going through all those forums to take back take into account all that feedback so just to revalidate what you're saying absolutely uh, yeah so i mean there's there's options in coursera to leave comments on videos uh downvote videos now I'm, I'm actually i'm proud that i'm proud to say that we you know we were above 85 percent i think on every one of our courses but you know uh, we do take your comments into account. There was a lot of people who said some of the content was too slow, too much for beginners. So you know what? We can't let the beginners suffer. So we just labeled it beginner and optional. We didn't make you have to do it. You're paying for Coursera, skip it if you know it, right? But then don't complain when you don't know something later on or whatever. So, so either way, uh, we tried to kind of make everyone happy. Um, on top of that though, uh, going back to the fact that, you know, the support levels that we're offering now are much higher. Uh, there's much more involvement, at least on, uh, on I would say, I want to go as far as say on an industry level, because I'm taking a huge interest in this. Uh, and I would say, I would go as far as say as Qualcomm is also very interested in the outcome. Um, we want to make sure that you're listened to. And so throughout the course of the next six months, when everyone starts taking these courses, uh, your 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 comments will will be taken into account and hopefully we can push out more content like the way this is set up this course we have set it up in a modular fashion that allows us to simply plug in new projects so one day module two of course two could have two advanced projects the next week it could have three four or five we can just plug in new projects so we wanted to set it up in that way now Simon, course three. Uh, okay, let's go. Go over. Here we go, course three. So you guys can all see this. By the way, Coursera has this thing called a pedagogy, right? So you can see that the students that developed this put in a lot of time to make sure that they followed Coursera's pedagogy, almost 100%. That basically means that you're getting your bang for your buck here. Uh, you're taking a course that is almost fulfilling every single thing that Coursera deems advantageous for your learning experience. All right, let's do this. Uh, so yeah, um, the third course is much more focused on the cloud and using the using AWS for a bunch of projects, which I found was really fun uh, to learn and teach. Uh, so the first part is just giving you a general idea of uh, the cloud. Um, this section is actually taught by Gons, uh, one of the prof professors here at UCSD, and uh, Ara from the last iteration. Uh, so yeah, they talk about the cloud and give you like, a brief introduction to AWS. Uh, the next part is just helping you get set up on AWS, making an account, and setting up for all the right things. Uh, <clears throat> So, yeah, yeah uh, real quick, real quick, because you mentioned Ara. Ara was in the last iteration, but also Ara doesn't live here anymore. Uh, he was another kind of special guest that we flew down uh, from San Francisco. He works for Visa now, and uh, actually, I, he did work for Visa, at least when this was recorded, as far as I know. And um, we were very grateful to have him come down here. Uh, he's a super smart guy. I, I love the guy. So, you know, I'm really happy to, that he was able to make it down here and, and provide us with some of his knowledge. Yeah, it was really great working with him. Uh, he, he knows it quite a lot. Uh, and then the next part, we have the communication protocol. So, like, just understanding uh, what you'll be sending back and forth from uh, AWS and just kind of a brief idea of how it works. Um, and here we have uh, AWS core services. So, like, some of the popular ones, like, AC2, uh, uh, RDS, S3, uh, and just setting up how to use it and set up your own web server or uh, web service. And <clears throat> so those are some of the brief ones. And the next one is uh, the Hello, Hello World for AI services. So we're going to go through some more services uh, for the AI section of AWS, uh, like recognition, poly, Lex, and uh, how to use GPUs for machine learning. Uh, <clears throat> And then, uh, so yeah. And then we have uh, projects, like smaller projects using AWS. So here we have our first like connection with the Dragon Board. Uh, we have the sensor stream, so you actually like take all your sensors, 
uh, and throw it on the board and then just like send all that data to AWS and then like show all the data just streaming from your board onto a website. And then you can play with it and see like how uh, all the data is changing while you're changing it in real time. So like anybody could access that website if you let them and then you can just, they can also see how your data is changing. Uh, the next yeah, one I mean, is- on, on, a, on a very real level, you know, like the, these exercises and these projects, right, they're, they're kind of geared to give you a foundation, right? So, so you're, you're building a foundation to, to what you can actually do, which is something much bigger later, right? And that's kind of uh, us saying we want to build your way, build this, this foundation on your way to your personal capstone either something that you personally are passionate about, something you want to do, or if you continue in the specialization, by course six, you'll find that eventually we plan on replacing the self-sustainable uh, mobile surveillance system. So maybe you'll find that uh, all of these things that you're learning will be very beneficial to you when you get to course six. Yeah, totally. Keep uh, keep everything you're learning in mind and just like see how you can uh, integrate it to your overall project. Just make it a lot better. Uh, AWS certainly helps a lot with it, uh, integrating it and connecting it uh, throughout the world and any other system you have. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, some of the other projects we have next is Emotion Booth. Uh, it's almost like the home surveillance system, except a lot of the, like inferencing and the, the face recognition part of it is handled by AWS. So it's just leveraging some like an easy service by uh, Amazon that you can just give them an image and they'll just hand you back a bunch of information about it. So here we have an emotion booth. So we use the dragon board to like like switch between uh, putting in different emotions depending on what the user uh, looks like, is happy or sad. So just giving a give a sample about how to use that. And uh, <clears throat> the next one is like the environment alert system. So basically you have a bunch of sensors on some system and want to show you how you can use it like uh, if like the temperature gets too cold in like a server room or something, how you can use that to alert you via text, like there's a problem or something. And just a quick overview, overview of how to do that. I'd so be more worried about it getting too hot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah that makes more sense. <laughs> I was just using some like extreme temperature for that. Yeah, yeah. cold is actually better. <laughs> um, yeah. And then the next one, we have some more like harder projects to do. Um, the first one is MNEST API. So you just take uh, a machine learning model, like the example one from, ten from the TensorFlow tutorial, uh, load it up, uh, train it, and put some like weights on it. So that, uh, put some weights on an EC2 server with the machine model like ready to take in an image. And then uh, I, sh I show you how you can uh, make your own API and like, take an image that you have stored on like your computer or a dragon board and then send it over uh, with a request to the server and it having it process and respond back with uh, its prediction of what number it is. So here it's just guessing between like zero and 10, oh, zero and nine for the like, digits. Um, yeah, it's like building your own like Amazon Web Services like much on a much more basic scale than like the face recognition one. Uh, and then the next one is the Facebook chatbot. So we actually use like almost, almost the quite similar to the service that like the Alexa uses where it takes in uh, like a user wants to know like the weather or something and an action. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then it understands what the user wants and responds back with like a conversation about how to do something. So in this one, we've connected it to a Facebook page and then you, you would be able to interact with it by just sending it like normal Facebook messages and how to, and like what for just like ordering food. And it's like much more user friendly than like an invoice or something and much more accessible if you're just having a phone. So yeah, uh, there's other, Facebook isn't the only option for those of you that may not have access to Facebook. I think there's like Kick and Slack integration that you can do. What about Twitter? And then Twitter. Um, not I think you can hook into it, but it's not easily, the instructions aren't there yet entirely to hook into AWS. Because uh, I think they all have their own like custom ways to hook uh, the chats with uh, with other services. So yeah, uh, if anybody actually has, finds that, I'll be welcome to like show it on uh, the Coursera and add it on as a project. That'd be really great. And then AWS uh, Greengrass. 
Yeah, I know your screen, guys. Yeah. Uh, this part is <laughs> is more about the like, edge computing. So the cloud is great and all, but um, sometimes you don't always have access to the cloud, or it's you have to do a lot of processing. You don't want to send it all to the cloud because maybe you don't have a lot of bandwidth or something. Uh, so this is like an edge system. You can set up like a small AWS like server almost onto like some system locally, and uh, and then have a bunch of like IoT devices connect to it and send messages. You can even do Lambda on it and some other small services. So you don't have to always uh, do your data like, analysis all on the cloud way over there with some like higher latency. You can just do it on the edge, and then can, and then when you need to connect to the cloud, it will send messages back and forth depending on what you require. So here we just go through like a simple demo of how to get started and uh, what it's about. So, um, and then the final, the, like the final seven assessment for module three is actually like a peer review advanced project. So we show you a couple of those and we want you to build your own advanced project uh, using the cloud. All right. Woo. Yeah, and so uh, very awesome. Uh, the, you worked really hard. You and your team worked very hard on all of this, Simon. So thank you very much for doing this. Uh, there's some comments in the chat here. Um, so this is from Tyeth, one of our regulars. It says, does AWS have cognitive APIs like Project Oxford? Are you aware of that, Simon? Uh, I am not entirely aware of that. Um... Cognitive, I'm not, too, I'm not familiar with cognitive APIs. Uh, so, so Taya, there's like, on the Amazon services, I think there's like 50 or something different services. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out if you are interested. Uh, some of the ones that Simon shows are some of the more commonly used ones or the most used ones. Uh, however, uh, it's definitely within the, in our scope to possibly add more of these services as time goes on. So, you know, you can see uh, some of these examples here only really take advantage, I think, of three or four different or two or three different services, but it's possible that as time goes on, we add modules or lessons to complement different services. I'm yeah, not aware totally. of that. And, uh, yeah. and with uh, AWS being so big, they like to add even more services. Like even as I was developing this course, I saw a couple new services they added uh, to the system. So if you see in those new ones, you can play around with it and make a project and again, show it on this course. Wait, is Greengrass, so Christine comments that Greengrass is one word. Is it, here it's two words. Is it somewhere, is it spelled with two words somewhere? Oh, is it two words? By the way, Greengrass is one, is all one word. You should be good. I'll edit it right now. <laughs> uh, so then uh, Ivan, Ivan Farkas uh, also comments, he says, great course, already have some great ideas on how to update the course using ML on IoT Edge. Perfect, this is awesome. And we do look forward for any of these inputs. So um, we'll keep our eyes open for that. And uh, you know, if you, I, you've been coming to the call now for several weeks now and we, we love it. We look forward to having you on here more often. And you know, if, if, if maybe we can make another Coursera update in a month or so, uh, but I can get you in touch with the students. We can also keep collaborating, you and I, Ivan. And then, yes, big thank yous. Christine says she has to leave. Christine, you want to give any last words? Because we're still going to do one more walkthrough here. You're muted. You're, you're, oh, Christine, you're muted. <laughs> I was uh, didn't get myself unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Just again, big thanks to Simon and to Robert and Rajan and all your perseverance um, and uh, to get this kicked off and finally live on Coursera. So we're so happy. Thank you. Awesome, Christine, and thank you. And thank you for all the support from Qualcomm. Uh, very, very grateful for that. Uh, so as Christine just said, Thanks for getting this live, right? Well, this is kind of the big thing. The course, while we were talking, is now live. So this is the official release of the course. So anyone who is currently signed up to Coursera, anyone who currently has a, a an account there can go take these classes. Everything we just covered, everything that Simon and I just talked about, it is officially available on Coursera. Now I'm still sharing my screen, 
And I'm going to show you this because this is how someone would see it as a new time student or learner. So let's view as a learner here. What happens? See, like my VPN is causing my internet to go a lot slower. Okay, so as a new learner, you get a chance to enroll, right? So I have not gone through this process. Oh, is that why? Because I'm not, because I'm not logged in. Why would it unlock uh, out, uh, log me out? So it says that I'm already enrolled because I guess I'm, I, I guess I'm already enrolled in this course as an admin. But if you go to the course as a, as a, as a new learner, oh, there we go. So now I get to join the February through March 18th iteration. So this course will reset every so often, and you have to join at the beginning uh, of each one of these cycles, right? So that you get the benefit of working with other students that are also participating during that cycle. So seeing as though this was launched today, you have five days to go onto Coursera and take this course. Now, the new model from Coursera, again, as far as I understand, because we don't have a Coursera representative in the call with us, is that you pay a one, uh, not a one-time fee. It used to be that you pay a one-time fee and then you get to take the course. And then you own that course for whatever amount of time until you finish, you get a certificate, done. Now, you pay a subscription, a monthly subscription, and I think you can just take any course on Coursera, which is kind of nice because if you start taking our course and you're like, screw this, I hate it, <laughs> you can just go to another course. And then likewise, if you hate another course or you're just not really learning something, come to our course. And so you just kind of get to experiment and, and experience all these different levels. Anyways, let's click join. I don't know what's gonna happen here. So join, Did I click it, there you go. Success, you've joined the February 6th, March 18th session for Internet of Things V2, Dragon Board, Bring Up, and Community Ecosystem. Boom, view course. So here you go. It sets all of my deadlines currently on week one. It's showing that I have videos, readings, and practice exercises. So roughly I have um, this much uh, stuff that I need to do uh, for the first, for, for week one. So it looks like you can start it. Oh, let's see if this video plays. There we go, this is the specialization trailer. Is there no sound? Oh, darn. Oh, here. I'm sure you guys are getting like a bunch of echo. Yeah, it was pretty horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll turn it off. Anyways, there you go. There's Simon dancing. All right, cool. That, that, this, is the, this is the first video of the, of the series. And then as you can see, you can just start clicking through the course, getting your resources in order, making sure that you have your Dragon Board 410C, uh, making sure that you're aware of the different uh, places that you can go uh, to communicate with the 96 boards team, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get to mark things as complete. You should, of course, upvote everything and go through the course. Everything's on demand, and you just kind of keep learning. And here you go. This is this is the first week. Go through your terminology, concepts, everything that we just talked about on the admin side. It's all here available for you to explore and and consume on in an on demand uh, way. So uh, very cool. Uh, again, we're really excited to share all this with you and um, we look forward to making this the best experience possible uh, as time progresses. So please keep in touch with us with your feedback, your comments. I am still gonna retain adminship, adminship um, of the course, Simon, and we believe two other students might be joining on. Uh, we also might end up seeing uh, some of our previous students like John Mark and another uh, gentleman by the name of Carl who took the previous iteration. Uh, we're trying to get them on board as mentors as well because you know they're they're very fun and they're uh, very uh, I want to say like educated in this type of uh, work. So you know they've been a very big help throughout since the beginning of this Coursera course. It is now 8:50 or I should say 50 past the hour and I want to kind of open the floor. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, comments on this? No, it, it, it's open. 
I, I, I don't know if Jung is still in here, but we can try calling on him again. He might have left. Looks like he did, so. Questions, coming. Not what we're do. Okay, here, maybe something, maybe something from Tyeth. So the Grove connectors are the white block ones, simple interface, but other solutions are pretty simple. Are are pretty simple alternatives. Where am I getting this? Where am I getting that feedback from? I think it's Rajan. I muted him. Sorry, Rajan. Yeah, but um, you know, honestly, I've seen so. For instance, right, like you have something like the Raspberry Pi, okay? The while the interfaces where you're talking about, like I plug on this mezzanine and then I use the Grove connectors to interface with various sensors, kind of like what Ty is saying. I am not a huge fan of Grove connectors. However, I have found that in some situations, it's so much easier than cutting wires and stripping them and plugging them into a breadboard and just to test a simple sensor. Now, the thing is, is that you're kind of stuck to whatever modules are created around the Grove sensors, right? So you kind of buy from seed or whatever's selling Grove connector type sensors. The Raspberry Pi, you know, I, I remember working with this for my, for my first dev board several years ago. You plug on this ribbon cable. The ribbon cable breaks out into this nice little breakout PCB, plugs into a breadboard, and then, of course, then you go strip your wires and prototype from your breadboard, which is all fine. Uh, but yeah, just two different types of two different ways to build things. You know, I mean, from here, essentially, you can kind of do the same thing. Uh, I would really like to see eventually. Uh, I, I mean, it's kind of in the works through our mezzanine community, but I want to see a ribbon cable equivalent for the dragon board where you take this 2.0 millimeter pitch and then you break it out with a ribbon cable and then it expands to a 2.54 millimeter pitch breakout board that you can plug into a breadboard. Similar to what Raspberry Pi does, but for a converted 2.0 millimeter pitch header. That would be nice. What else? Anything else? No? Because if not, we're gonna call it, CW came up with something, let's see. You may have covered this, but if you're enrolled in the Internet of Things specialization course set, does this take its place and do the weeks of previous work count? If you are currently enrolled in the, in the, uh, if, so let's say that you're currently enrolled in course two, the previous iteration. Uh, unfortunately, I don't believe those weeks count, but you should finish that anyways. So you should finish that course and then come back and take this course, right? Or from my understanding, the way Coursera made it sound is that uh, they prompt the user to branch off and split off and start this new iteration. So I think you'll have the option. Uh, you might get an email or you might get like a pop-up window that says, hey, a new, a new version was released. Would you like to, would you like to follow that path? And so, that, that might be an option there. Otherwise, I think you can just go sign up for this one directly. And you can take, you might be able to take both of them at the same time or drop the old one and take the new one. Either way, both courses are, are, are kind of standalone. So you're gonna get different value from both courses. Um, now granted, uh, the course that, this new course that we released is, is, a, is a new course because we felt that we fixed a lot of the things that were wrong in the last course. Right. So and something I didn't touch on here, but is if you go to course two um, at the very end, after you do your advanced projects, we did keep a large section of, of installation videos. So changing your oper uh, operating system. And this is, again, supplemental and optional. But at the end of the course, um, you can go on demand mode and watch how to change all of your operating systems using different host machines, whether you're using Windows, Mac, Linux, um, fast boot mode, SD card mode, et cetera, et cetera. And then we also kept the section that allows you to, or helps you to rescue your board. So for anyone who's ever done a software brick on your board, um, it's no fun. In fact, sometimes you think you've broken your board and it's never gonna work again. 
But uh, if you go through these steps, hopefully it helps you and then you end up with a working board again, right? Now, there are the situations where you burn something out and then the board's trash, but hopefully that's not the case and it gets fixed with a simple um, SD card rescue image. All righty, so all good. I'm gonna close out, close out the section, close out the segment. Did, did Rajan, did you have anything else you wanted to say, Simon? No, I think thanks, Robert. Thanks, and uh, thanks to Simon also for kind of putting this together. Uh, it's been it's been uh, an awesome journey. Like I said before, I've really had fun working with uh, the team at UCSD and you, Robert. So it's it's a great course that we've put together. I'm really proud of the work that uh, Simon and his team team has done. And uh, and Rajan, are we going to look forward to having you on open hours again more often? Again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Um, so I did. It looks like the video is working now. You can kind of see. I'll show you this real quick. So this is a this is the new the new layout, right? A little crisper. See, I'm my beard is nice and shaved. Rajan's looking happy. Um, and then you can see we we the the AV team kind of like I said earlier kind of did pull out all the stops. You can see that uh, you know we have the picture in picture now. Uh, the slides I feel are a little bit higher quality than the last time. Um, so yeah, we provide more links. There's more, more resources for you to go explore. And, um, and yeah, look at that energy. So much energy. So it'll, it'll be fun. There you go. I'm going to mute you one more time, Rajan. Sorry. I think I think your room is, is very uh, there's a lot of like uh, echo in the room. Either way, thank you, Simon. Did you have any last things to say? Are you still here? Simon still here even, or did he leave? No, he had to go to class. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Tim. Um, so it sucks. I, I you just reminded me, Tim, that uh, we were going to talk to Qualcomm together, huh? So. That's all right. No, yeah, but it's okay. Uh, Rajan might be able to help us with some stuff. I also got some news as well on okay. Wednesday. Um, I'm so gonna, I'm going to hang around. Okay, great. So we'll do that in after hours. Um, so I'm going to close out the episode, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for sticking around, spending the time with us. Uh, again, I, you know, this call is super informal. Uh, I do give the disclaimer at the beginning. I talk like a madman. I don't stop. Sometimes I don't leave spaces for people to interrupt me, but interrupt me. I'll, I'll try working on that. Uh, interrupt me. Talk as much as you want. We like the conversation. I love the conversation. And um, again, so, uh, you know, let us know what you think. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Facebook. Uh, the links are inside the chat. We do plan on releasing a blog. I have a blog that I'm going to be pushing out at the end of this episode today um, with all of this stuff in there, all of the things I talked about. And then, of course, please visit Coursera, check out the course, have some fun, and let us know what you think. Uh, this is, I guess, the end here. Um, so I'm going to turn off the recording. We're still going to be on for just a second while we shut down Facebook and YouTube. Thank you very much. February 1st, episode 89, uh, going off now. Yeah, thank you. How do I do this? Let's see. Recording. Off. Recording has stopped. Okay, so we're still on Facebook. Let me shut that down. Facebook Live going down. Bye, Facebook. The broadcast of Facebook Live has stopped. Okay, um, and then Sahaj, you're up on YouTube? Yep. It's going down. Bye, YouTube.